Some of the advantages of using the exponential form are it's shorter, so you don't have to write as much as you have to write if you're using the polar form, but it also makes some operations easier than if they are done by using the polar form. Let's think about multiplication of complex numbers, ones we know modulus and angle rather than working in Cartesian coordinates. Have a look at the following example. Given the following complex numbers in exponential form, set 1 is equal to 4 by e to the power of pi over 3i, and set 2 is equal to 2 by e to the power of 2 pi over 3i, find set 1 by set 2. Okay, if we just write it, set 1 by set 2, then we have 4 e to the power of pi over 3i by 2 e to the power of 2 pi over 3i. In order to multiply this expression, we're going to multiply numbers with numbers. So 4 by 2 which will give you 8, and then what is left is the multiplication of two exponentials that I'm going to write it like this, pi over 3i by e to the power of 2 pi over 3i. In order to multiply these, you just have to remember how to multiply powers. Remember that if we have x to the power of n by x to the power of m, then two powers multiplying with the same base is exactly the same as a single power with the addition of both exponents. Therefore, in our case, we will have 8 by e to the power of pi over 3i plus 2 pi over 3i, which is the same as 8 by e to the power of pi over 3i plus 2 pi over 3i is simply 3 pi over 3i, which is the same as pi, as the 3s will cancel. So we have pi i. From this, you can deduce that if you think about z1 by z2 to be a complex number, then you can talk about a modulus and you can talk about argument as well. In this case, the modulus is 8, and the argument is pi. So in general, if we have two numbers, set 1 equal to r1, which is the modulus, by e to the power of theta 1i, which is the argument, and then we have set 2, which is our second number, which has modulus r2, and then angle theta 2, if we multiply them, we have set 1 by set 2, so we have r1 by e to the power of theta 1i by r2 by e to the power of theta 2i. In order to multiply, we will multiply numbers with numbers, so we have r1 by r2, and then for the exponentials, we treat them as the multiplication of two powers. Therefore, the answer will be e to the power of the addition of the exponents. So we have theta 1i plus theta 2i. If you take i as a common factor, then we have e to the power of theta 1 plus theta 2i. So this is the modulus of your final number, and this is the angle of your final number. What happens then if you are multiplying complex numbers where you know the modulus and you know the angle? Have a look at that. Modulus get multiplied, r1 by r2, while angles get added, theta1 plus theta2. This would have been a way more complicated to show in polar form, since to deal with the polar form, you need to remember a bit of trigonometric identities. Similarly, we can think about dividing complex numbers given in exponential form. So if you have set 1 and set 2 as before, if we calculate z1 over z2, what happens is that modulus get divided, r1 over r2, and then if you think about the exponentials, what happens is that you need to remember how to divide powers with the same base. And if you remember how to do that, 
you just have to subtract the exponents. Therefore, your new angle would be theta 1 minus theta 2. In conclusion, you can say that when you divide complex numbers given in exponential form or in polar form, what happens is that the final modulus is the division of the two and the final angle is the subtraction of the two.